Hello everybody, welcome to Filmmaking Today, Boyan Dulabik here. So, are you a filmmaker, digital artist, or just someone who needs a powerful laptop and you're wondering if this guy's powerful enough? Well, let's find out. So this is my full review of the HP Spectre X360. This is the late 2017 model and it's the Intel 8th generation. The one I have is an i7 quad core CPU with 16 gigs of RAM and 500 gigs of storage. It weighs 2.75 pounds, which is not bad at all. It makes it very easy to carry around. The display is 4K with a resolution of 3840 by 2160 and has 71% of Adobe RGB and 94% of sRGB. The display is definitely beautiful, although I do find the colors slightly muted. Maybe it's just me, but it's just something I've noticed. But all in all, it is a gorgeous display. There's no doubt about that. Because it's a 4K display, some apps don't scale properly. This is not an HP issue. This is just simply the way it is right now. Developers still haven't caught up to 4K displays. Now, when you set up the device, by default, there'll be a 300% scale, and that's what Microsoft recommends. I personally find that too big, so I changed it to 250%, and I find that to be the sweet spot. Some apps will look a little too small. However, generally speaking, for me, 250 works. The small bezels on the display are great, but they do make it difficult to use it in tablet mode, so something to keep in mind. However, when using the pen on it and just in general, when browsing and just using the device, having smaller bezels is definitely an advantage. When it comes to speed, since this is a quad-core i7 CPU, you do notice a difference when going from a dual-core CPU. For example, I took a clip that's 8 minutes and 47 seconds long with a resolution of 14 seconds by 1006 and a data rate of 2.44 megabits per second and I converted that to 1280 by 868 with a data rate of 1.14 megabits per second and I used handbrake to do that so just to give you a comparison with my Surface Pro 4 which has a 6th gen CPU dual core it took 8 minutes and 3 seconds with the Spectre it took 3 minutes and 37 seconds which is great and it's obviously a huge improvement from previous generations. When it comes to ports, you get two USB Type-C with Thunderbolt ports, a fingerprint reader and a volume rocker on one side, a micro SD card on-off button, headphone jack and one USB Type-A port on the other side. Because of its placement, the fingerprint scanner is hard to get to, which means it's easy to miss. I've had it happen quite a few times where I had to input my pin because I didn't place my finger on the button because I couldn't see it. If the fingerprint area was on the top, that would not be a problem. When it comes to the trackpad, it is definitely on the larger side compared to other devices. In my opinion, I think it's a little too big. There's really no need for a trackpad of this size and it just means more work when you're dragging the cursor from one end of the screen to the other. It's not really a deal breaker by any means, but something to keep in mind. Also, another thing to keep in mind, which is more important, is the fact that this does not use Microsoft's precision technology. It uses HP Synaptic technology, which is okay, but it's definitely not as good as Microsoft's. Now, luckily, there is an easy hack, so you can use Microsoft's precision trackpad. The link for that will be in the description, so check it out. Keep in mind, this is a hack, so make sure you back up everything and you are doing this at your own risk. This is a fast charge device with USB Type-C. HP says you can get up to 13 hours of battery life. I'm going to just give you two random letters. One will be a B and one will be an S. And you feel free to do whatever you want with those letters because that's what this is. There's no way in hell you're going to get 13 hours. You're going to get three to eight hours, maybe nine, depending on your usage. If you have the full HD version, you'll definitely get more than with the 4K version. Now, one important thing for everyone running Maya is that when you install Maya, you will also notice that something gets installed called Chromium Host Executable. Now, as far as I understand it, this is an extension of Maya and it takes up to 30% of your CPU usage, which obviously drains the battery. From my research, there's really nothing you can do even when you're not running Maya, this still runs in the background. If any of you know more about this or have a workaround, please let us know in the comments.
Also, Chrome could take over 30% of your overall battery usage, which obviously is going to impact your overall battery. If your life does not depend on Chrome like it does with me, I suggest try using Microsoft's Edge browser. It's not as good as Chrome, but it also does not waste as much battery as Chrome does. Now, when it comes to the actual battery life, if you keep the power mode on the second lowest level, don't run Chrome and keep the screen at about 60% with regular usage, you can get about six, seven hours easily. If you do all that, but with Chrome running at the highest power mode level and heavy usage, so if you do video work, if you do Photoshop, browsing and all that, you can get about three hours, three, four hours, depending on your usage. Now, if you're charging the device while doing some light work, so browsing a few videos here and there, it will take a little over four hours to charge. Now, if you shut down the device and charge it then, it will take two hours. HP claims it takes 90 minutes, but from my experience, it's closer to two hours. When it comes to the pen, it is definitely lighter and not as programmable as the Surface Pen. HP does include their HP Control app, which does give you a lot of options, but the ink space in the settings menu includes a few more things that I would like to be able to use with the HP Pen. Also, because there's no way to attach the pen to the laptop like you can do with the Surface, it's easier to forget it at home or just lose it. However, the pen itself is actually pretty decent if you want to use it for a ZBrush or drawing, whatever it is. I do think the Microsoft pen is slightly better. With the HP one, you will sometimes have to click something twice for it to register. And those errors are far less with the Microsoft pen. Now, the good thing is that you can use the Microsoft pen on this HP device if you choose to, since they use the same Entreg technology which going forward I might actually do because I'm used to using the Microsoft one and I really like it, so I might just stick with that. Also, the lack of a kickstand does require an additional item to give you a bit of an angle when the device is lying flat on a table. I find it difficult to use ZBrush or draw or whatever when the device is flat on a table. I do prefer a slight angle. When it comes to the keyboard, overall, it's really nice. It's got good travel. The backlight has only one level. It would be nice to have more levels, but it's not a deal breaker. Also, sometimes it can be hard to see the labels on the keys in bright light because they're silver. If you get the black model, that's a lot easier than this one. The home and page up and page down buttons are located on the right side, which means they shift all keys to the left. Now, this might be annoying for some people. I've had it happen a few times where I hit the wrong button because of that shift. But all in all, it's fine. It doesn't really bother me. When you mute the sound, there is an orange light that appears on the button, which can be annoying for some people. Also, especially since all the other keys are blue and this is the only orange light, that can get annoying and there is no way to turn it off that I'm aware of. This can be fixed very easily in a software update and I do hope that HP will put that on their list. Just give us the ability to turn that light off. When it comes to noise, under normal usage at the second lowest CPU level, I tested it for about two minutes and the noise level was about 30 dB on average. Obviously, it will get a lot more noisy when you're doing heavy duty work such as video editing, 3D modeling, VFX and all those types of things. However, I found that it's still a lot quieter than let's say the Surface Pro 4. When using it in tablet mode, the small bezels do make it difficult to hold the device. However, the fact that there is a large bezel on the bottom of the screen where the HP logo is located does suggest that HP wants us to hold the laptop vertically and grab it there with either the left or the right hand depending on whether you're a lefty or a righty. Only problem is the fact that you will feel the keys in the back when you're holding the device, which can feel very awkward. Now, this is the truth with all two-in-ones, except for the Surface Pro where you can detach the keyboard and the Surface Book where you can flip the screen around. The good thing is that the keys are disabled, so you will not accidentally trigger something, but it does feel awkward. I like to read comics on this device sometimes, and the screen is beautiful, there's no doubt about that, and the comics look amazing. And when I'm in my bed or on the couch holding the device and reading the comics, it's fine. But when I'm walking around and moving around, the keys in the back do get in the way and make the tablet mode not the greatest experience. When it comes to video editing, this device works really well with full HD footage. I've edited a few of my Filmmaking Today episodes on this device and it was fine. 
Obviously, to get the best performance, you should plug in the device and increase the power mode to the highest setting. Since there's no dedicated GPU, but rather an integrated Intel 620, I do recommend to keep the quality setting in Premiere Pro to either a half quality or maybe even a quarter quality, depending on what you are doing with the footage. When it comes to 4K footage, you can definitely edit in Premiere Pro, but you will have to drop the quality to quarter or maybe even to one eighth. Again, depending on the amount of layers you have, and what kind of effects you are applying, it will make a difference. I also use this device in After Effects to create some motion graphics and other intros and it worked really nicely. I did not have any problems there. When it comes to 3D modeling, specifically Maya and ZBrush, this laptop will not disappoint. It's fast enough to keep up. Obviously, when it comes to rendering inside of Maya, it will depend on what you are rendering. And of course, having a dedicated GPU will make things faster. Now, since this is a USB Type-C with Thunderbolt device, you can always get an external GPU to boost your render time if this is your primary device. When it comes to ZBrush, performance is not an issue. As mentioned before, the Microsoft Pen performs slightly better as it has less click errors. And I find it's a bit faster, but the HP Pen is certainly up to the challenge. And if you have never used a Microsoft Pen, you won't even notice the difference, but it is something to keep in mind. Also, because the fan is located on the back of the device, you need to hold it upside down if you are using it on your lap. Otherwise, it's gonna get really hot. If you're placing the device on the table, it doesn't really matter. Now, all in all, this is a great little device, and I do think that the price is right, which is around $1,400 for this model. If you are someone who needs more power for the occasional video editing and Photoshop work, this will be more than enough. You might even consider using the i5 or the i7 with eight gigs of RAM. If you are a photographer, this is also a great choice. If you do heavy duty video work, or if you are a 3D modeler or animator and need to use ZBrush, Maya, Substance Painter, any of those types of apps, first make sure to get the i7 with 16 gigs of RAM, do not go lower. Now, if this is your secondary device, like it is in my case, it'll be fine. If this is your primary device, you might wanna consider getting the 15 inch version with the dedicated GPU or get an external GPU as mentioned before, which will definitely boost your performance, no doubt. In my case, I really wanted a portable laptop and since this is my secondary device, I was okay sacrificing some performance as long as I can get most things done on it. And for the heavy duty stuff, if I can get 50% done on the laptop and then continue on my desktop, I'm okay with that. Now, of course, your mileage will vary. Just keep those things in mind. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section. I will be doing a comparison video as well between the Spectre and the Surface Pro 4 in case you are in a situation like me and you own the Surface Pro 4 and you're wondering, should I upgrade to, to this guy or not? What are the cons and the pros and all that stuff? So I'll talk about all that uh, and I'll be doing an accessories video on the accessories I'm testing out right now for uh, the Spectre and other accessories that I really think you should get if you are considering this guy. So that's it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, and uh, hit that uh, bell icon to be notified of future videos. Thanks, guys.